What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good to see you again. Hey. So what's your status? You know, We know it's cold in Dallas. We get it. We know that <laughs> nobody ha has electricity, which is horrible, but what's your specific status? We're total. I'm totally fine here. Very blessed. Yes. And Leah, yesterday have, you had hot water. How, how you feeling today? Yeah, still no water. So still no shower. Don't it's tell anybody about that. Um, <laughs> but we're making it. It's good. It's a good day because we're not freezing and we have a roof. So yeah. So my hot water came back on today. So I, I felt a look a little cleaner. Like I, I look a little cleaner, I think. On, on <laughs> I can see it, Chief. I can see it. I know. I'm going. I'm just glad bit. no one. I'm glad no one can smell through Zoom. <laughs> Leah. But, but, but many, but many prayers and many prayers for all the folks that are still, uh, you know, without yes, power, absolutely. without water, or or without shelter, because there's some folks out there without shelter. So we definitely mm -hmm. want to uh, keep them in our prayers. Uh, today, though, is a milestone. Well, it's 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 the a pre milestone, right? We're we're at show number ninety nine, right? So. We're going to party like it's Chief Chat 99 today, <laughs> right? Yes, sir. My jokes are just horrible, but y'all got to deal with them. Like, that's just how it goes. You're going to laugh no matter what you say. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It, you know, it's always cool. It's always cool to, to, to have enough rank to where you say anything and people laugh, even though it's not even funny. <laughs> wonderful. But uh, let, me, let me get off of this. And uh, today we got three amazing guests that are here to, sh to tell us about a new book that captures the essence of what our service members endure in defense of this great nation. So Julie, please introduce today's guest. Uh, James Patterson is the world's best-selling author. He is known for his fictional characters like Alex Cross and Michael Bennett, but today he's here to talk with us about real life heroes with First Sergeant retired Matt Eversman, who is part of the Ranger unit portrayed in the movie Black Hawk Down. Their new book, Walk in My Combat Boots, available in store and online with the exchange, shares brutally honest stories of service and sacrifice. James and Matt are joined by Taya Kyle, wife of American sniper Chris Kyle. She's an author too and an advocate for veterans and military families. Please help us welcome James. James, Matt, and Ty at his chief chat. Hey. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. And our, just real quick housekeeping for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments and let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your questions and comments with James, Matt, and Taya. We'll read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should because we have, we host Chief Chats every week and we have terrific military exclusive guests coming up. Absolutely. So James, Matt, and Teo, it is an honor to have you three with us today. Uh, welcome to Chief Chat. And for Teo, welcome to Chief Chat again. Uh, so can you, can you let our viewers know where you guys are calling from? Taya. Okay, I'm calling from Dallas, Fort Worth, a beautiful, snowy, cold Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm calling from Florida, beautiful, sunny Florida. Sorry <laughs> about that. We don't get snow, we just get hurricanes occasionally. Yeah, and I, I'm just across the ditch from James in uh, West Palm Beach. Awesome. That's great. I'm really jealous of you guys in Florida. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty jealous. <laughs> That's why I had to shake down so you won't see the sunshine out there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being considerate of that. Really appreciate that move That's on your part. He's a empathetic guy, right? He's a super empathetic guy. We Very empathetic. <laughs> so Matt and James, congratulations on walking my combat boots. Hit the shelves this month. James, could you give us a glimpse inside the book, um, which shares stories of valor from the Vietnam era through today? How did you select these stories? Well, uh, I, I've said a couple of times now that I think it's the most important book I've ever done, uh, much more important than the fiction. And because the, the notion of what we're trying to do is to get people to understand the military better than they do. And you all can know that the military isn't, isn't understood the way it ought to be. And when Matt and I set out, we had two, two things that we wanted to accomplish. One is, if you've been in the military, if you've been in combat, you will say that Sergeant Eversman and Patterson got it right, and you've given us a voice. If you haven't been in the military and don't really understand it, and, this, and a lot of people are, are like that, we're sending this book to everybody in Congress because we don't think they understand. A lot of them don't anyway. 
And, but if you but if you don't understand, you'll read the book, and at, by the end of it, you will understand what it means to serve, and you'll understand what it means to put your life on the line for someone else. And the next time somebody says, you know, uh, thank you for your service, uh, who, somebody who's read the book, they'll know what they're thanking people for. Mm. That's good. That's good. Matt, uh, turning to you for just a moment, you're an army veteran and your story of survival was highlighted in the book and movie Black Hawk Down, which I did watch the movie last night um, while I had power. And that focused that on so the 19th. was so much more handsome in the movie, wasn't he? Truly. <laughs> He was handsome. <laughs> so the, the movie and book focused on the 1993 Battle of Mogadishu in Somalia. In that hostile battle, you fought for 18 hours alongside your brethren until being rescued. <clears throat> for your actions, you earned the Bronze Star Medal with Valor Device. You're a true hero. What called you to a life of service? Well, thank you very much. Uh, very kind words. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. I think everybody's got a, got a different answer that probably you know, um, morphs over time about why we, 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 we joined. Um, but for me, it was twofold, you know, back in, in the late eighties, uh, you know, the height of the cold war, uh, one, I was doing absolutely horribly in college, like a miserable, just, you know, sinking, sinking ship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, eventually when they put me out of my misery and told me to take a sabbatical, um, I ran into an old buddy and this is absolutely true. I ran into an old buddy, um, that was home on leave from Germany. And that was the time you might remember, you know, Germany was still divided. And so the whole idea of, of you know, what we call the Cold War, but this idea of, of, of stopping the Russians in, in Germany all of a sudden became very, very um, appealing to me. And, uh, you know, the adventure and, and I would even say maybe with, you know, a little, um, you know, the, 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 the uh, idea of youth, but, you know, I, I wanted to go to war. You know, because it was easy to say that when when you've never been shot at. So a little bit of a lot, but I think that, that it wasn't so much the call to service, you know, of the flag and everything. But at first, it was just, hey, I, I need an adventure, and um, mm -hmm. man, I had one. That's for sure, several times over. And and one of the yeah. things, I mean, the book consists of you know basically forty five stories, and Matt has said mm -hmm. every one is six or seven pages. But in those six or seven pages, you will meet someone. It's, it's, it's like you know them. Somebody said that, that reading the book, it's like going to a military base and every 10 minutes, somebody, another veteran or somebody mm -hmm. serving will come and tell you their story in 10 minutes. And then somebody else will come and somebody else will come and somebody else will come. Yes. And, and that's, that's kind of the way the book goes. It's very fast paced. Mm -hmm. It's not like, um, I don't think it's like any of the other military books that I've read or Matt's read in that sense. And, and we just, and, 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 and with the interviews that Matt did, uh, uh, we would go from, how did you get into the service? What, what happened in basic? What happened to you once you were out in the field? And then afterward, if you're, you're still in the service or if you've come home. So we covered all of that in the interviews. And then what I would try to do is take these 40 or 50 page interviews and turn it into five to six, seven pages that really captured that person. Wow. And, a, and a, you know, which I think makes it very, very different. Absolutely. And, and so we, we've had the pleasure of uh, interviewing some uh, Medal of Honor recipients on our show, uh, probably about five or six of them. And, and man, those, those stories are, mm -hmm. are, are, are amazing. Like they, you, you could just sit there and listen to them talk about just how they started in the military and what they endured doing that thing all freaking day. So it, it was, uh, it's awesome to see that you kind of, uh, and captured all those stories into a book <laughs> so people can kind of follow along on, on, with, with what our heroes are doing out there. And what you said, that's a very accurate description of what I would say the book is too. So it's it's a couple of pages of a story, but you're you're so involved in that story and that and that but it's real short, you know. I I don't know. I I haven't finished the book yet, but I've started reading it and uh, I like it. I was glued to it. It just like what's going to happen next. And then each, and I love that it's, it's quick, right? So you don't feel like, you know, if you don't have time to read a, a big book in one sitting, you don't have to, because the stories are so personal and so quick and they're, they're incredible. As er, every American needs to own this book. They really, really yes. do. You know, and, and to that, it's just so awesome to hear. And, and listen, I would tell you nine times over and twice on Sunday, how amazing it was to watch what Jim was able to craft out of the 
really big interview, you know, a 50 page, you know, uh, manuscript from each one of those um, interviews. You know, but the, the, what I, I wanted to just throw out too is, you know, we've been at war for 20 years. You know, Mogadishu was 30 years ago. Um, people forget, you know, people have forgotten, you know, it's below the fold. We, we don't, we don't recall, at least this community knows, but, you know, outside, they, they don't, it doesn't dawn on them that right now there's a, a young man or woman from, from Dallas or Shreveport or, or Newburgh that's, you know, in, in dog on the Horn of Africa or, you know, on the Arabian Peninsula chasing down bad guys. And this, this book, you get to know them. You get to well, meet them. You just one of the important things for us that we, we try to do here and that we, were, we, we understood about the world, like when my dad came back from World War II, he would never talk about it, ever. He never told us what went on with him. And a lot of families, that's what's happened. Mom comes back or dad comes back or a brother or a son or whatever. They don't want to talk about it. That's one of the reasons that a lot of people don't understand the military. And, I, and Matt did a, 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 a movie and a, a documentary in Afghanistan. He did a lot of interviews. And I looked at this thing and I said, this guy is great at interviewing. You know, when you're on 60 Minutes or stuff, some of these things which I've been on, and I don't know, tell you may, may have also, there's a little screen because you don't necessarily trust the interviewer. But with Matt, they knew who he was. They knew his experiences and they trusted him. He knew the right questions to ask. He knew the right follow-up questions to ask. He knew how to put people at ease. So the interviews are just loaded with these stories that a lot of these people haven't told before. And they would thank, they would thank Matt, which is sort of ironic. I mean, we're like, thank you. Uh, uh, but they would thank for having that opportunity to tell their stories, to get it off their chest. And, and I, I think one of the beauties of this thing is a lot of people, especially people that aren't in the, in the service, are going to read this and go, oh, man, I understand something now that I didn't understand before. I didn't get it. Now I'm starting to get it. Awesome, awesome. So Taya, hey, we're so, forgetting about you. <laughs> no, I oh, know. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing her in. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I'm so, actually just loving listening to what y'all are saying. If because it's, it's just the truth. I mean, first of all, thank you all for your service. And James, I'm putting you in that group too because I think there. I'm a big believer that there are a number of ways to serve the country, and one of the ways that I feel you served is through this book, and obviously the rest of you actively serving Matt your history it's it's amazing and I appreciate it um one of the things we learned with American Sniper was just how healing it was and we didn't know that going in but the stories of people coming out of the movie and their family members saying they finally opened up and I as I read this book I thought the same thing I'll be you know I don't read a lot of military books I just feel like I've had that experience I don't want to go back into it and truthfully, if it wasn't for this interview, I wouldn't have opened this book for the same reason. And I'm so glad that I did. It is different and it is better. It does move at a pace that makes sense. And it, it goes to the genius of probably the interviews, like you were saying, James, that Matt did. And then I assume James, what you did, putting it together in a concise way that you feel like you heard the whole person's story in a very short amount of time because it really hit the highlights in a way that transitioned well. And I was ready to turn the page and keep going, which again is not, you know, it's not typical for me in, in a military type book, but I think it was the human aspect and the fact that we know people like this. And the healing part comes when you can see something from the outside. You can't see it necessarily when you're in it, but when, you, when you're looking at it from the outside, looking in all of a sudden you recognize things so the fact that you were talking about, I mean, on the home front was my favorite section, but, um, and I'm sure you know why, but it, the honesty of it and the, the regrets and the, the transitions and the thought processes were so just raw, you know, vulnerable and important. And so I feel like there's going to be, I want to encourage people who are in the military, who have seen combat to also read this because civilians want, who want education, this is the book for sure politicians who need to understand it better. This is the book. Um, but the, some of the poignant parts, and I won't jump ahead, um, Chief, I know you've got, you've got some answers or questions that you want to ask. But, um, it's all good. All, huh? It's all good. We're just having a conversation. So hey, okay, will you well, go on the road with us? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really is. I, I just, you know, they talk about kids and, and broken marriage. And then, 
you know, there was even the one guy who I, I felt like, oh yeah, I know a guy like that. Like nothing was wrong. They were perfect, you know? And I, I almost didn't want that story in there, but at the same time, it's good to have it because we all know those people too. And, and it's not to say that uh, they didn't have a really good experience, but it's just not, it's not whole. Uh, the guy, Kevin, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Drotty or Dottie. Drotty, yeah. Drotty, yeah. You know, I see this young guy and it was like, you know, he, I, I wrote this down and said, um, if you act like a man, I'll treat you like a man. And he's like 24 telling these guys, you know, who are older. And I think, but that's the truth. He'd been in six years and he was saying, you can train for combat, but until you've been there, you don't know it. I can't tell you. And you know, the training is on the job. Um, and, and I think it speaks to the vulnerability of, of getting off. I mean, you had different stories where somebody's getting off of the, the helicopter or the plane and hearing gunshots or the uncertainty. The military doesn't tell you exactly, you know, what you're going to be getting into, as you all know. So I think that paints that picture for people who haven't experienced it like me to say that would be so disconcerting, so uncomfortable. And, and so many of us in the civilian life, it's like the pandemic hits and we're thinking, oh, well, I don't know. I can't predict anything. And you think this is welcome, right? Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, living in the bubble, even when I um, would watch sports and, and they would say we, we're in the bubble, uh, well, that's deployment life for military members, right? We're, <laughs> we're always in the bubble. We 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 can't go outside, not because uh, of a pandemic, because people are shooting at us. So uh, just it, just just being able to share those stories, and like I said, um, uh, we we had the chance to talk to some Medal of Honor recipients, and most of them did their their action when they were 22 years old, 23 years old. Like just imagine at 22, 23, having to have that much responsibility. Uh, it, it's it's crazy, cause I cause I. I've done I've I've done a lot of stupid stuff in my life and and a lot of it happened when I was 22 and 23 but to be like in in the middle of a combat zone leading other men and women um to to whatever it is that we're doing that's just that I don't think uh, most of America can really understand that without being there as you as you say no, that's a great thing to compare because the NBA bubble you'd love to be in that bubble yeah yes absolutely <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. would love but uh oh. no go ahead. Well, I'm just gonna say one other thing. Um, see, you opened the you opened the box. It's like you broke the seal on Taya, and now it's like, oh, I oh yeah, yeah, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it back in the box in a second. <laughs> um, but you know, the other thing, there was a story from Patrick Kern who, when he was talking about the mentality of the people in the Middle East and the Iraqis and the Sunnis and the Shiites and the tribes, that I'm so glad you wrote that because I feel like people also don't realize so many times you hear, you know, like the beginning of the Iraq war, remember there were people who thought they would go and protest at the oil fields. They were like, we're just gonna go over and sit in the oil fields. And Saddam was like, awesome, round them up and let's show them what it's like over. I mean, there's just such an, a naivety an ignorance almost of, it it's, uh, was best described to me, I think by Melanie Luttrell saying it's, the tribes are almost like different gangs and it's like a gang war, right? And, and so you're, you're shooting the leaders of the gangs and you're hurting their kids and, and the child's lives being expendable to me was just, it was so important for people to realize that it's a different world. We are not just talking about people who, you know, we're, go, we're, we're not going to Italy and helping them, you know, vote well. It's, you know, it's, it's a totally different world. And so I liked that at the end, he was looking for a solution. And he said, I don't, I don't know that we have one. And I remember Chris saying the same thing. You can't go over there and see that mentality uh, and have compassion for the civilians because you know, they're, not, they're just sort of existing and surviving, right? But it's the tribal leaders and the terrorists who are, they're just kind of caught in the crossfire. And how do you change that? You know, But at the same time, you can't just let it grow and get out of hand. So is it just one of those things like it's a cancer that keeps growing and we keep cutting it back just so it doesn't overtake the whole continent or the whole world? I don't know. But that kind of stuff, I think, was so well done because you hit it without, without ruminating on it. I mean, you spent less time than I'm spending on it. You know, <laughs> and, I mean, one of the and, things and it, that we tried to do, and it's come up several times in interviews, is, and, and, and I wish more news was like this, we're just putting the facts out there. We're not editorializing. We're not telling you what to think. Here it is. Here you make of it what you will, and 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 you know the more experience people have, the more they can really understand. I mean, you get stuff like the you know this 
thing, and I'm not, this isn't a political thing about what happened at the Capitol. And I don't see people from Congress now going, let's defund the Capitol Police because, yeah, okay, you've just been attacked and it's different now. You're, the way you view it is different. And, 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 and similarly, that where Matt and I started with this thing is, if you really want to understand what's going on with the military, you need to listen more, you need to hear the stories, you need to, here are the facts, you make of them what you will. You can walk away from and go and, you know, I still don't like the military. Okay, fine, but at least now you know what you're, you know why. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, at any rate, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, Taya, I just wanted to comment on, boy, you, you opened up a ton of great threads to, to chat about. Um, but, but what really kind of been going through my mind the last couple of minutes is, um, you know, we talk about uh, going over to the Middle East or, you know, getting out of the country and seeing, I can't tell you how many of these men and women that I interviewed that had never been on a plane until they went to basic training. Like that was the first time literally they had flown somewhere. That was me. That was me. Yeah. I had never been on an airplane before, before. I never been out of the country, all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, 9-11 happens and they have spent more time in Baghdad and Kandahar and Kabul and Mogadishu than they have, you know, in, in Dallas or, or, or West Palm Beach. And, and where I'm going with that is, you know, to that, to that point, you know, so many, so many Americans that are not in the military have never traveled. And they certainly have never been to the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, they think they know what it's like over there, but they don't. Like you said, let's go protest at the, you know, the oil fields. I mean, you know, they, they, anyway, <laughs> where I'm going in a long way is this book yeah. introduces you to people that actually do have a, a, something to say as well, you know, and, and just sort of as a public service, you, you see that kid in the airport with the tats and everything, say, ask him what he or she thinks. They, they, They've seen it, you know, they've been across the mountain. So Absolutely. that's a little, that's as deep as I get today. Chief, one of the amazing things to me about the book, and it's not really about Matt or I, is, is just the way these people express themselves is so wonderful. And so, it's just so true. And I, I, I don't like to read from books because it's kind of boring because you read a chapter and people like fall asleep. But you can read like a paragraph from this thing. Like here's yeah. uh, Jody Pritchard, she's an Air Force flight nurse. And, and just th th this little thing, and she says, I have a full sleeve tattoo dedicated to the patients I've lost over the years. It's a reminder of what I've seen. And this is, a, I think, a, a point. She says, it's also a reminder for me to remember that it's okay to feel the way I do. I wouldn't trade my life for anything in the world. I love wearing the uniform. You know, it's just, I mean, two paragraphs, boom. I mean, you know, wow. and there's so many pieces like that in here. Uh, and that's, I think, what really keeps you going and keep you learning and keeps you and, and gets you understanding. And, and if you get a service member to start telling their story, it's super therapeutic for them personally. Like it's like it's it's because because, you know, it's already hard enough to, for, for folks to open up about mm -hmm. things they've seen or, or experienced. But yeah. if you're able to, to, to get it to where I'm talking to you about it, man. It's, it's helpful for, for you and it's helpful for me as well. So uh, I, I think it kudos to, to being able to, to draw those stories out of those service members. Chief, I want to say this too, just, you know what? It's interesting that both of you brought up that point of asking a service member, because I remember Chris thanking a Vietnam veteran in front of me the first times. And I was like nervous. So I thought, man, I don't know how they felt about Vietnam. I don't know if they want to be talking about it or acknowledging it or, and they were always so grateful. A few of them teared up because nobody had ever thanked them before. I mean, this was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And so I think it's a little bit more common now, but it wasn't then. And I think there's some, there's this line that, that civilians have where it's like, do you talk about it or do you not? Are they the person that hides it? But what you just said, both of you, you taught me something because I think maybe the value is that it's a stranger where they might be able to say something. Maybe they're not talking about it at home because that's too personal. It's too vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But maybe talking to a stranger, like in an airport, you ask about the tattoos is therapeutic. I had never considered that before because I, I think still I'd be like, oh, I don't know mm -hmm. if I should ask about their experience. So thank you for that. That's that's awesome. Stick around, kid. I mean, it's amazing what happens when you put Jim Patterson and Eversman together. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. So no. James the stories and Matt, were there. Um, That's the amazing thing. The stories were there. And what was it like, you know, working together on the book? So 
J um, Matt, did you do the interviewing? James, did you interview as well? How did the book come together? And what's something that each of you learned from the other while, while putting the book together? Uh, uh, well, I go Matt story. did almost all the interviewing. I did a couple, but Matt did most of the interviewing. Yeah, Jim gave me, um, you know, some some really wide uh, parameters, you know, about how to go out and get the stories. And and in fairness, I started just with a couple of buddies just to get started and then just ask friends of friends of friends of friends. And we put some stuff out on the Internet. Um, but it really actually we, we got a lot of folks um, relatively easily. What was interesting and I'll, I'll hand it off to Jim, but what's interesting to me was there were, you know, so many of these men and women that their first response was, hey, my buddy said I should talk to you, but I don't know why you want to talk to me. I was only a fill in the blank. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't do anything. And, and you, of course, once you talk to them, um, you find out, boy, you did an incredible amount of things that nobody would ever imagine. But, you know, so I would get these stories, transcribe them, sort of sniff through and see what I thought might be of interest. And then literally I would drive uh, over to Jim's house and, uh, you know, we'll give him a, gosh, you know, a couple hundred pages of, of manuscripts and he would then take it and start doing his magic. Yeah, I would get, I would hear the thud on the porch where he's dumping these 300 pages <laughs> of interviews. <laughs> Matt's back. <laughs> No, I, and, and the great thing for us, I think, working together is it, it was a passion project for both of us. Um, and and when I, as I said, when I saw Matt do the interviews for, for the documentary he did, I just said, this guy is really, really good at it. In fact, we're doing another book now. It's, it's uh, on nurses. Oh, wow. It is, it's a mind blower. If anything, it's more intense than this book, Emergency Room Nurses. Oh, yeah. It's, right. it's just stunning stuff. And, and once again, we're, we, we love this notion of getting these stories. And the weird thing is, and it happened with Combat Boots too, is these people sit there and go, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, but, but thank you for telling, for, for telling us your story. Yeah, and, and, my, and my, so my career field is medical, the medical career field. And, um, and just, you know, being able to talk to the nurses, because interacting with those nurses on the front line, uh, day mm -hmm. in and day out, man, it's, um, mm -hmm. they, they got some stories for days. Mm -hmm. they're, they're exhausted, they're, mm -hmm. they're tired, but they care so much about their patients. So yeah, I, so if you got another book in the works, man, f for the medical medical mm -hmm. career field, man, they're gonna love that, definitely. Yeah, well, there's some, there's some stories in here. You'll see that, you know, the helicopter goes in and it's, two minutes has got to pick up a couple of wounded and get out in two minutes. And, and then, you know, as, as you all know, you'll, you'll get a guy on the plane, he's lost his hand and he, all he's asking is when can I get back? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, it's. Mm -hmm. You can't make it up. You know, if you didn't know these people. No, I could make this shit up, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> make this stuff up. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the folks that have never met He's a James there, Patterson. He <laughs> can make it up. <laughs> it would seem like it's right out of a movie. Um, but it's all real. And, and, and Taya, like you said, it's very raw. Um, it's unvarnished. It's, uh, um, again, it's all in earnest. It, it, they're, they're, I keep sounding like a broken record. It's just amazing to, for me, I thought I knew a lot about soldiering. And I thought I knew a little bit about combat. And I my eyes were were open dramatically. Uh, I'm like, wow, I had no idea. I mean, logically, you think you know, but hearing it, just it, it, it's amazing. And it is stunning, mm -hmm. all of these people thinking that they don't have any stories. And every one of them had stories. You know, uh, the Drottis, uh, uh, uh you mentioned, um, and, and these are twins. And, and they go over there and, and they're in different units, whatever. And they're, and they're doing, you know, tough night stuff, that very dangerous things. And when they're done, the night, all they can think about is, is my twin okay? You know, it's like a movie in itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just mm -hmm. that, just that little chapter, you know. Uh, and I've so been wondering, huh? I've been wondering that you said movie. So I'm like, this would be like a good series, you know, each story, its own episode of a TV series. There you go. <laughs> well, the problem in Hollywood is you have to get them to understand something they don't understand. Yeah, uh, so that's the yeah. hard that's the hard part there. I mean, they get it, you know, if it's whatever, 
some big adventure thing or they can make it that way they get that piece because it's they've been doing that they don't get this (laughs) this thing i don't want to go on too much of a tangent but i do want to um just speak to that a little bit because there is a narrative that most people have right and we and we can see it in hollywood unfortunately and and this book is not that, which I loved that about it. And like you said, James, it wasn't, it had no agenda. And I love that. And it wasn't set out to make me cry, right? And it wasn't set out to make me laugh. It was just, like you said, just the fact I crave that. I've got to think that more people in the world crave that, right? Mm-hmm. Just, just tell me, tell me what it is and let me make my own decisions and thoughts and feelings on it. And so uh, I agree with you. I don't think that, um, I think it would have to be something more uh, independent if you know somebody were to do it because yeah. it doesn't fit what they want. And, la- and I'll just say one more point and then I'll get off of this little box. But um, you know, I, it occurred to me, I have some other projects in the works and it occurred to me that the things that would sell so easily are these fictional stories, which are great. And there could be the real story that's more dramatic, has more plot twists, but because it's a real story and it just doesn't quite fit, mm-hmm. right? And that is mind boggling to me. So the other, that was the other part of this that was so refreshing to me. And one of the reasons why I was like, more, 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 you know, is they were human and, and their experiences of like, people say, oh, I'm sorry you had to go to war. And you, one of these stories said exactly what all the SEALs I know will say. And that is, I don't want, and they use the same analogy of football. I don't want to train for the game and never get to play. Right. I'm, I want to go experience it, which is a, a weird thing to get your head around because they're not bloodthirsty. They don't want the trauma of it, but they did sign up to have a purpose and they want to live that out. And it's not, it's not bloodthirst. It's just, I, I have a purpose here and I'm, you know, dedicating my life to it. So let me at least have that part. I just, I love, like I said, I just love the book. I think it was so well done. Uh, and I wanted to encourage people that it's not going to be too emotional because, yeah, would- you know, and Taya, yeah. people are dying for the truth now. I mean, yes. we go around, it's just so hard to get at it. You know, we, we, um, we did it actually a thing that our first little thing was with the Admiral uh, McRaven, who's a very good writer, uh, by the way, the two books that he's done have been terrific, but he said something that's so um, appropriate for right now. And this isn't a political thing, but he said, if, if these challenging times caused you to lose hope, uh, and I think people on all sides have that feeling a little bit, this book will reaffirm your faith in all that is good and honorable about this country. And, and I think he's right. I think he's, and we need, we need that. I think we need it. Absolutely. We, we definitely need that. So thank you for, uh, for giving the people what they need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were unapologetic too. I like that. You know, like you said, Matt, when you're interviewing, they're just, they think, or, or James, you said it too, they think somebody else's story is more important. And so they're not mm-hmm. inflating it, you know, they're just, and I just, yeah, I just thought it was not only them saying that, but y'all captured it really, really well. It's, I'll just go to the, the story you had about the woman with the tattoos, right? That's a perfect example of this book because when she says she's got the tattoos of all the people she saved, it paints a picture that tells a ton of stories in like two lines. You know, you get it without having to like spell out every detail. And for me, that was part of the genius of this book and how it moved. So um, it was quick paced. I loved it. So, so James, uh, so you, you, you write all kinds of different types of novels and books and- um, Yeah, and you so, said your, your son used to read one of my kids' books. Yeah, yeah, so- Which, uh, is, like, which I, is another big passion that I have because you gotta get kids reading. If, we don't, if they don't become competent readers, it's so difficult for them to, to make it in the world. And, and I try to do kids' books that kids, you know, I, the, I have a little kids' imprint at Little Brown. And our mission is um, that when a kid finishes one of these books, they'll say, please give me another book, as opposed to millions of kids who go, I don't like to read. I never read a book I liked. And that's another, I mean, that's just in terms of, in the same way that this is a mission that I was, you know, uh, passionate about same thing with the kids books absolutely so this is the book that i i, I don't know if you guys can see because my virtual background but it's uh the middle school big fat liar so it's, it was sitting <laughs> on my shelf didn't even realize it was on my shelf and then my son has another uh of your middle school books so um but but how how's your approach different when you're writing different genres or in writing of, of writing like 
Well, the adults aren't as smart as the kids, so I have to dumb them. <laughs> um, you, you know, it's always, it's always the same thing for me. I like to pretend there's somebody sitting across from me. I'm telling them a story. I don't want them to get up until I finish. And that's what propelled uh, 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 in terms of the way we put together Walk in My Combat Boots. I mean, nobody's going to sit there and read a thousand pages of interviews. It's just, no, it's, it's too much. It's, too, it's tedious. Even though the content is, it's there, but it's just, it's more than you want. And this is like a lot of these books, you get these, you know, thousand pages on U.S. Grant. I actually liked that book, but that's that's a tough thing. <laughs> U.S. Grant, a thousand pages. <laughs> that's about a week. <laughs> so, yeah, but I, I try I try not to do that. Uh, I, I want people I want people to read it. I want them to finish it. I want them to talk about it. I want them to share it. That's that's what we'd like to have, have especially with this book. James, Matt, and Taya, we have service members watching from all over the world right now. And I just want to pause for a moment to share some of the feedback from our live feed. So speaking of your- But they got to uh, do this in English because we don't, I speak a little Spanish and not <laughs> so, yeah. no Marcy. English for me. So that's that's what I'll, I'll right, read okay. back to you. So speaking about your kids' books, uh, Barbara Tinder says, my son just walked through and said, look, it's James Patterson. I like his books. So <laughs> see- there you go. Oh, you're already, you're already, already. James can't even go to Walmart or, or Target, man. You, <laughs> you just, you walk past and, and just like, oh, that's James Patterson. <laughs> and uh, Teresa Schimmel says, I am forever, forever thankful to those who paid the ultimate price for us and to our veterans for their service. I think that's um, a good sentiment. We have people watching from Sedalia, Missouri. Um, somebody says, I love you. I love James Patterson. Um, Good morning from Kentucky near Fort Campbell. So um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, Waco, Chiefs Texas. Page. Oh, go ahead, Leah. Julie, from Chief's Page, Amanda May says, I can't wait to read this book. Good, good. And hope, hopefully it'll touch you and and, and you'll you'll share the, the, the thing with other people. Pass the book around, be great. And uh, Teresa says that she is a proud Ranger mom. And she also says, thank you all for your service. So she's thanking you as well. So lots of great comments on the feed. Lots of people watching. You're touching a lot of lives today. Yeah. And, and that's another element that the parents of these, uh, these, these brave uh, folks, man, uh, you know, they're, they're proud of their son and their daughter for, 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 for doing what they're doing and re recognizing. And so, you know, being able to tell those stories and I'm sure as a parent, that just warm somebody up inside as well. You know, I'll add to that with the, I didn't uh, think about that until just now, but one of the things that I've heard consistently with service members, and we've had some experience too, there becomes a divide that you don't intend between the service member and their extended family or their, you know, their parents, because it's an odd thing to try to describe to somebody who's known you your whole life, how you've changed when you're not even sure how you've changed yourself. And there, I think parents get lonely for the relationship that they had and the children don't mean to be distant, but they just are, they, they become distant because they're different. And so I think the other huge benefit to this and maybe some service members who are listening will buy this for your parents because I think it does a lot of explaining and it has the opportunity to open up lines of communication uh, even if parents, you know, even if they say, hey, this guy talked about this, was that your experience? Or did you know people like this? It's a way to start the communication because usually the service member doesn't have the way to start the conversation. Absolutely. Man, we're just picking up a whole bunch of just nuggets <laughs> and, and, and wonderful things about just in no normal, natural conversation. So uh, this is awesome. I appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. And some Before of the stories, Matt, Matt loves that door gunner story. That's that's yeah. a, that's a good one. That, uh, you know, I think different. that's my favorite one. <laughs> all right, okay. It really was, and and, and it's fantastic for a variety of reasons, and they're all great. I and I had the, you know, the 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 honor and the luxury of listening to every single one from start to finish. Um, so you know, they like I know I feel like I know all of these these men and women, you know, even more so. But uh, that one with Lisa Bodenberg, that young Marine. Um, who was compelled after 9-11 to enlist and just wanted to do the hardest job. Like she wanted to be in Force Recon and they're like, hey, you know, we're, we're not letting females in. So, you know, go mm -hmm. back and do something else. And she's like, 
I'll, I'll go be a door gunner. I'll go be a crew chief on a Huey. And uh, incredibly high standards. You know, they, they really put it to her. She had to be, basically be the honor graduate at every course, you know, just to get out to the fleet, which basically was just to go to war. And she did. You know, she, she went and did it each and every time. Um, you know, it's Rocky and Rudy all put together. It, you know, when you're, when you're feeling down, look at, you know, look at Lisa. I, I tell my daughter, Molly, who's going to play uh, uh, collegiate volleyball next year. Oh, okay. uh, and I've said to her ever since, the, you know, this started, I'm like, read, read this story when you're down. It, it'll inspire and motivate you. And not that it's easy, but it's doable. So, you know, you look at that, that that's a phenomenal, phenomenal story. Uh, for me anyway. Same. So, what that about was you? my favorite for sure. Yeah. Taya, <laughs> what about you? Which story stood out to you the most? Uh, you've mentioned a lot of stories, but just wanted to give you the opportunity to share the one that no, stood I out to you. No, I appreciate that. I mean, it, it's, the, it's the home front stories. I mean, I mm -hmm. was trying to pick a couple or, you know, when, when I saw that it was pick one, I don't know that I could pick one just because I liked them for different reasons. And, and I also liked the fact that there were there were different reasons for serving and i feel like in the civilian community there's a there is i don't want to say a stigma maybe but you know matt you kind of talked about well if college isn't for you and you get invited to leave right <laughs> but the thing that i want people to know you know like there is that that um perception sometimes like you couldn't do anything else right or i have a friend who uh you know the judge told him he could go to jail or he could go to the you know i mean but the thing is that I feel is so misunderstood is that these, the people in the military are so diverse and they go for all different reasons. Like this woman you're talking about who wants to challenge herself and she wants to find something else. You have a person in there, they're just real, right? So one of them says they want adventure. One of them said they wanted to fight because they were angry. One of them said it was a way out to do something else. And that's the truth. And I feel like maybe it's just culture and society today that we want to categorize people in one way or another. And so we, we forget that in any group, we're all different. You know, there's no way to just, just have a blanket statement. So I really appreciated that you talked about that. And, and on that note, last thing I'll say on it is I, I want people to know that the people in the military could have done a number of things. They could have done a number of things. They chose mm -hmm. this. It wasn't like this was their only option. I mean, my friend in the, in the, uh, jail or military thing maybe right yeah. you know, two options, but that's like that's rare that almost never happens I, uh, I love the language of being invited to leave college that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a really nice way to put it you know, you know yeah, one little piece of, another one of these little loaded paragraphs um and it also touches on something which i think you all understand but i think other people who aren't in the military don't understand at all and it doesn't it isn't talked about much and, and, and this paragraph goes, I think about the way the door gunner acted during the firefight, how we all came together to help Charlie who had been wounded and get him to safety. It's the greatest symbolism of love I've ever seen in my life. This might sound bad since I have children, but the way these men came together, it's absolutely true. There is no greater love. And, and that's, a, for me, a stunning thing. And I think it's something that a lot of people don't understand about the military, the experience, the closeness, part of the reason that people will put their life on the line. You know, it's, it's just a stunning thing. And you don't, hear, you don't hear people talking about the military and using love much, but, it's, but that's really essential, I think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and actually, you know, I remember we, we say thank you for serving, you know, and thank you for the rest of us. And I've had a few people honest enough around me. And I've heard them say it to somebody else, I didn't do it for you. And I was like, Ooh, you know what I mean? And they oh, said, wow. I did it for the guys to the right and the left of me, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. And I think that it, they may have started out for the country. They may have started out for a, a lot of different reasons, but when it gets down to it and you're in combat, like one of your stories, I'm sorry, I forget who, who it was, but they were saying they were just about to jump out of the plane in a parachute as they're signing their will, right? And you can't, you'd, you'd have to not have a conscience or be not be human to not immediately have some compassion or connection to that person simply because you're experiencing something so dramatic and trauma brings people stronger. So when you say love, that's it. It really is. And, and, and with that, I think it was Drati again, who talked about getting out and trying to find a new sense of purpose. I was glad you touched on that because I didn't fully understand it when Chris was in and 
I thought, well, when he's on leave, it's amazing. We have a blast. So, you know, how would the end this purpose? I mean, my God, his kids, you know, he's best dad ever. And I, I adore him. And I didn't realize until after he was killed that sense of purpose that I had for a few things like carrying on his legacy or something that meant a lot to me and the sense of purpose I had with my kids. And you can't be in two places at once. It's huge. And I think you did a good job, you know, again, touching on it quickly. It was just a touch, but you get it. I think people reading it get it. And I just don't think there's a thing you left out with, with people's experience and you did it in a genius way. So. Okay. You know, one of the things we've heard, because we've done a lot of interviews and, and, uh, and, and, and gotten a, a lot of advice and advice that, that I think is useful for veterans, or a lot of veterans, is that notion of you have to go out and get another mission. You have to go out and get another uh, something else that's going to give you that sense of purpose. I'm not l preaching to people, but you just hear that again and again and again in terms of that's easier said than done. But but it is it is, it, is, it is a way to, to 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 get to the light again. I think. Yeah, it is, and I, I I'm glad you said that because I, what I didn't say is there was a period of time where it took Chris and I know Matt. You probably know tons of people. You all probably know tons of people that have that transition period, you know, and maybe it was six months to a year where it was really tough. And then all of a sudden he found his stride, he finds his groove, right? And and part of the thing he could help people, but you know, before he was killed and I'm so glad that I had this experience, I heard him say this to people on the phone and he told me about saying it, that he was telling people, I would never recommend that they get out of, I'm not trying to convince anybody to get out of the military, but if they want to get out and they're concerned about it, I tell them I have more joy in my family than I ever had in the military. And I did not know that that would be possible, right? Because that love that you have, the brotherhood you have, the sense of purpose, all of those things, it would be hard to think if I'm at home and I'm just working a job, right? Which is kind of how people see it, just working a job, then how could I have the same joy? But you find it. And I wanna encourage people who are listening, you do find it. It takes a little bit, it's an adjustment. I mean, we all, I don't know, I've had experiences gosh, five or six times in my life where I had to reinvent and recreate, adjust, you know, um, but it, it, it happens and the military probably trains you for that. If you think about it, the ability to, what do they call it? Say it, adapt, adjust. Adi yeah. Revise, adapt and overcome and all that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Yeah. No, you know, Taya, you're, you're, you're spot on and, and just a, a quick two cents on, on that. Um, you know, it's so hard to go from you know, full bore, great adventure, you know, the esprit de corps, the mission, all that, the excitement. Uh, and let's face it, in some communities, even more so. And then literally, you know, once that door closes, it closes. You know, I mean, all the alumni groups, all these things are all great and good for drinking beer, but at some point that closes and literally overnight, you have, you being any of us, a complete new identity that you've got to find. And we don't like that. We don't, we don't like that. It's not, it's not like there's no adrenaline rush in becoming a new one. And, and just to land that, the, the, the plane, what I would throw out if, if, if anyone's listening, if that's in that position, I would just say, you know, it is going to be okay, but you know, what's really going to be cool about it is that you're going to find it in the most unlikely place that you would think. And not that mm -hmm. family would be unlikely, but you know, you're looking for this new adventure as a lion tamer or something that ain't going to be there, but it's going to be something that's going to hit you. And you're going to say, oh, wow, I got it. So, you know, say yes, you know, be open and say yes. And it'll, it, it will work. I promise you it, it will. Well, well, this conversation, it has been just amazing, you guys. But um, before we wrap up, James, Matt, and Taya, what's ahead for all of you, but beyond the new book, I know, James, you mentioned another book um, that you're working on, but any other projects that you'd like to, to talk about? So James, we'll start with you. No, I, I, the nurses thing has, has both of us very excited and that will be out later this year. Uh, and it is, it's a mind blower. It's, it's just, a, there's two things about it. One, the stories themselves, because as Matt has said, you know, in combat, it's not like every day you're going out. When you're an emergency room nurse, you pull this curtain back, this guy's, this kid looks like he's lost his eye. Next curtain, somebody's having a heart. It's just in day after day after day. Mm -hmm. And the other piece of, in that book, I shouldn't get into this book yet, but <laughs> it's, um, mm -hmm. if you went and you were looking for the sort of the underbelly of America, I wouldn't know where to look for that. If I wanted to tell those true stories, go to emergency rooms. They see these people every day. 
It's, I mean, the stories that, that you, you just, I'm not going to tell one now, but I mean, some of the stories you go like, what? You'll <laughs> have story. to check it out in the book when it comes out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just uh, at any rate. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, what, what something that has me very excited and Matt as well. Thanks for sharing Not that. to speak to Matt about that, but. Absolutely. He's got a kid going and, and going to play soccer. That that'll be a big deal. Yeah, we're no, we're excited. Not uh, soccer, we, uh, volleyball. volleyball. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a lot. You know, it's always again you, you, this mantra of you know say yes, open up your eyes, and be be willing to you know explore things that you might not have. And again, for soldiers that are kind of right angle, that's hard. But uh, you know, we're we'll, getting through COVID. We'll see how how this opens up the marketplace. Uh, you know, I do a little bit of consulting here and there uh, with some businesses. So we'll we'll see. But I, I just know whatever happens, it's going to be good. And I mean, I sincerely, the outlook. You got to have a bright outlook, and you you've got to always look forward. So uh, Jim and I, like I said, I, I'll just just throw one to the end. This nurse's book will blow your mind. Uh, it's, it's, it will absolutely, you, you will not believe it. And it's the same thing. Nurses will read it and say, I know these people. And those that didn't will look at it and say, wow, I had no idea. So I do so have I, a question. Lateral to you. I do have a question about that. So you guys have mentioned how mm, this book, Walk in My Combat Boots has been, uh, therapeutic for military, you know, um, veterans and service members and families. So do you see the same for the nurse's book that it will be therapeutic? Same deal. For, okay. Same deal. And it's the same thing. Why are you asking us about our stories? Thank you so much for, you know, ugh. and, and sometimes mm -hmm. with the nurses, it would take, you know, a few minutes, but once it opens, boy, it just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we would love to have you back when that book launches and, okay, and discuss that one as well. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> and then Taya, what's ahead for you as well? Uh, I'll tell you, I, I do want to say this one thing. When you first said you're doing a book on nurses, I was like, whoa, I've never thought of that before. Right. But I have a few friends who are nurses and their stories are yes. incredible. I used to be in pharmaceutical sales. So I'd have sometimes an ER doc with me, you know, driving to a, an event or something. And I, to this day, I tell those stories because I'm like, you wouldn't believe the stories. Mm -hmm. they had. I mean, so I think that your book will be very healing. I think you have a job ahead of you with marketing to help people understand that there is so much in here. And, and I hope that it helps healing in the country to be a little bit more open-minded past the news or whatever somebody's deciding to show us outside of that mm -hmm. the the real people is what i call it in the, in the country are just extraordinary and they're doing amazing things so kudos to you for doing that i i think it's going to be a huge huge hit once people open it up you have, you have you have any books that you're doing taya yeah so i have you well, express yourself extraordinarily well it's it's stunning well, it's, yeah. thank you no i so appreciate that i've got chris and taya kyle foundation service family strong we work on military and first responder marriages um, there's a lot of reasons for that, but 80% of service suicides are relationship related. And when we learned that we were just, you know, we're in full, full war. So we have that. And then I have a, a children's book series that I still need to get a publisher to sign on to James. <clears throat> um, <laughs> it's called, <laughs> it's called uh, prayers for bears, but it's, uh, sort of your concept about get, getting kids reading. This one is about just getting kids to understand this, like super loving God in a fun way and like gratitude and things that I think are important to learn early. Um, because, you know, if we can be a little bit more grateful, I think we're better off. So anyway, there's a series there, um, uh, 10, <laughs> the first one just needs to get kicked off. And then I have warrior collections, which is a jewelry line that I'm super excited about. We partnered with uh, Montana Silversmith, and we've got a line coming out with uh, JTV, which I never knew existed, but it's super cool. Jewelry TV, they've grown in the pandemic because a lot of people wanted to shop and they could do it that way. But Warrior Collections is really just this uh, opportunity to carry your faith in a unique and cool kind of modern way and, and wear the armor or have a tangible thing to ground you. So I think in stressful times, it's nice to have something to hold on to. So those are my biggest uh, projects right now. And um, they seem to be going well. I'm glad actually that the, there was a slowdown. It gave me a good year to get my projects really ramped up. Good awesome. for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely. So uh, James Mantea, before we leave, uh, you got a very, very captive audience of, of service members, family members, friends. Uh, any, any final words or uh, words of encouragement for the folks that are watching? 
I, I tell you one thing. I think this is a really good, whatever, 45 minutes or hour or whatever. So hopefully you get it out because I think people will find it stimulating. It, it's, oh, no, it, it's live. these things that you go I'm like, live. this is a good one, though. It's a good one. You did, yeah. you did good, Chief. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you, sir. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Well, it's hard to be the moderator. It's hard to be the moderator. Yeah. Especially yeah, with six people. <laughs> I mean, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I would say I'll, I'll, a word of encouragement for people is, uh, you know, the sun still comes up every day. And sometimes the nights are the hardest. And when people are really struggling and suffering and feel alone, I think this book is amazing. It'll help them not feel so alone. I want people to know they aren't alone, even if they don't have someone in front of them or the book in front of them yet. And for me, I think, like I said, the, the people I know who have the hardest time, they feel alone and they feel hopeless. And there is hope. There's always hope. And the sun rises again. Like I just wait till one more sunrise. That's it, you know? Um, and, and try not to drink a lot. A lot of suicides happen when people are drinking and I just, I know that's an escape and I get it. I understand it, but um, the sun rises again and hope is there. That's, that's my two things. Yeah. You know, Matt yeah, talks I, about people that want to help, which is the local thing, Matt, you know, that yeah, I, would just, I think is really that, smart. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. I, I would just add on to that, to, to, to his comment, like, you know, listen, everybody on this planet, everybody watching this, everyone's got something in their emotional rucksack that they're carrying and you're, you're truly not alone. Um, I think, however, you know, we, we, we should always be looking out for others. We should always do it and we should be doing it locally. You know, start with our family, start with our friends, start with our neighborhood, our, our block, you know, that that's where it starts. You know, so many of these veterans um, challenges and obstacles could be reduced if we focus locally. You know, just my opinion, just my thought. Um, but that's where you can really get something done. Sometimes we go, oh, this big thing, because we want to, I don't know why, why as humans we want, but locally you can actually, you can do it. You can actually, you can really help. Yeah, face-to-face -face contact, there's nothing that beats it. And I agree, again, with both of you that I think it's easy to think that the government's going to take care of it or somebody else is going to take care of it. But um, Jim DeFelice, who I think you might know, James, too, uh, you know, he and I wrote a book called American Spirit, and it was, you know, it, it's, it's, that start locally do something and see what these i mean from kids to adults do something about it don't expect somebody else to do it and don't just gripe like just roll up your sleeves and do it it's rewarding yeah yeah deeds right. not words deeds not absolutely. words absolutely yeah. start with you did it in the military we call it the aor right your area of responsibility start start yeah. with your area of responsibility and then and then and, and let it exp exponentially grow uh, organically, and and it doesn't have to be from you because if you touch some one person, then they can go out and, and help somebody else. And so just just be the example. Uh, great great advice. Great. So as thank a reminder, you, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. This is really good one. Thank you very much. We were so honored to have you with us, James and Matt and Taya as well. So as a reminder for our viewers, it matters where you shop and walk in my combat boots is available at your local exchange and at shopmyexchange.com. James, where can viewers go online if they want to learn a little bit more about the book before they buy it? I never know this stuff. I think jamespatterson.com. I think. <laughs> Google, is your, Google. Google, Google is your friend. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they'll, yeah, you can figure it out, right? <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. That, this right. is great. Really, really yeah. nice. Absolutely. So James, Thank man, you, and man. Tail, we Thank really, you, really appreciate you being with us today. Uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure for James and Matt. Thank you for sharing Walk in My Combat Boots with us and our viewers. Uh, these stories will remain in our hearts. And Taya, thank you so much for all that you've done and you're carrying the legacy of your husband uh, so well. So we appreciate you for being on the show twice. So, so uh, James, you got it. You got you. She said she said in the bar, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we we thank each and every one of you. Uh, like I said, I I can't wait to start reading the book because uh, uh, I, I got a lot more context with this interview, and so now I'm uh, even more excited to read it. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. And Chief Chat out. Chief chat Bye. out. Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 Thank you.